what is happening to mohanlal in this video he is suffering from severe tinnitus which is driving him mad right now look at this painting this is by the famous artist mr vincent van gogh he was supposed to be having auditory hallucinations due to schizophrenia which caused him to cut his own ear look at the picture of him with bandaged ear but according to this paper it was a severe tinnitus associated with this condition that caused him to cut off his own ear hi everyone i am dr vishnu vinayamar here to entertain you with the topic meniere's disease what do you mean by meniere's disease meniere's disease is nothing but primary endolymphatic high drops occurring due to defective absorption of endolymph or increased secretion of endolymph what happens when there is increase in endolymph and accumulation within the scala media it can result in hearing loss tinnitus vertigo and all such features but if all these features occur can it be called as meniere's disease no it is called meniere's syndrome the triad of hearing loss vertigo and tinnitus is known as meniere's syndrome and when it occurs primarily without any cause then it is called meniere's disease what is happening in meniere's disease when the endolymphatic system is getting distended with endolymph later on it ruptures and because of that there is mixing of endolymph with the perilymph and because of the ionic disturbance that occurs it results in hearing loss vertigo and tinnitus healing of the ruptured membrane can occur later on and because of that the hearing can improve that is why the hearing loss associated with meniere's disease is supposed to be fluctuating hearing loss as you see here ella etra kaalam aayi chevi kekkal aayittu endu etra kaalam aayi chevi kekkal aayittu na endu avunnu illa magyo magyo what is the specialty of hearing loss associated with meniere's disease it is typically a low frequency sensory neural hearing loss now how do you define low frequency sensory neural hearing loss the bone conduction curve should be higher than the opposite ear by more than 30 decibel in uh, frequencies less than 2 kilohertz assuming the other ear is normal okay so because of the difference in frequency of hearing loss in both ears what happens is that there will be difference in hearing perception in these two ears and that can result in diplacosis okay what is the diagnostic criteria for meniere's disease according to the 2015 guidelines by bernie society and american academy of otorhinolaryngology to call a disease as meniere's disease you have to exclude other possible causes and you have to look into the various clinical features meniere's disease can be definitive meniere's disease or probable meniere's disease in case of definite meniere's disease there should be documented pure tone audiogram which shows low frequency sensory neural hearing loss and along with that there should be two or more spontaneous episodes of definitive vertigo that last for 20 minutes to 12 hours duration with features of fluctuating hearing loss tinnitus or oral fullness in the ear to call it as probable meniere's disease there need not be any pure tone audiogram which confirm the finding of low frequency sensory neural hearing loss but there should be features of fluctuating hearing loss tinnitus and oral fullness and along with that there should be episodes of vertigo or dizziness which lasts for more than 20 minutes up to 24 hours now what are the other features of meniere's disease what is happening here in this video you can see that the bmw ceo is suddenly falling down to the ground while he is giving a talk why is it happening so this is because the autolithic organs are getting suddenly activated because of the uh, distension caused by the endolymph and this activation is causing the person to fall down without losing any consciousness so what is this known as this is called as tumerkin's crisis or autolithic crisis or drop attacks tumerkin's autolithic crisis is seen only in the later stages of meniere's disease 
but there is one feature which is seen in meniere disease as well as superior semicircular canal dehiscence syndrome along with perilymphatic fistula what is that those phenomenon when you are getting exposed to loud sound it can result in vertigo and why is it so this is because the distended saccule is lying next to the foot plate of stapes right so when there is a loud sound what happens is that suddenly the saccule gets activated because of the foot plate of stapes going and pressing on the distended saccule and this can result in vertigo and this is what is meant by tullio's phenomenon now that you have learned about the various clinical features of meniere disease tell me what do you mean by larmoy syndrome what is the difference between larmoy syndrome and meniere disease the difference is that in meniere disease the hearing loss occur in the later stages that is earlier you will be having vertigo tinnitus and oral fullness and later on hearing loss occur but in case of larmoy syndrome it is the hearing loss that occurs first and vertigo occurs later Now what is the speciality of hearing loss in meniere disease The sensorineural hearing loss in meniere disease is of low frequency type and why is it so This is because the distension of scala media occurs earlier in the apex it is only in the later stage the base gets filled so the distension when it occurs in the apex of the scala media the hair cells in the apical region gets affected and only the area which is of low frequency is getting affected because low frequency area is getting detected by the apex of the scala media whereas the high frequency is getting affected only when the basilar part of the uh, scala media is getting affected what are the etiology of meniere disease i told you meniere disease is of unknown etiology right secondary endolymphatic hydrops can occur due to various causes like otosclerosis Cogan syndrome, autoimmune disease, uh, viral etiology, trauma, etc. Primary endolymphatic hydrops or meniere disease, you have to rule out all possible causes. Only then you can come to diagnosis of meniere disease. But there are a lot of theories proposed to cause this meniere disease. What are they? That is, first of all, viral etiology. Various viruses like herpes simplex virus. epstein barr virus all these have been implicated in causing meniere disease another thing vascular vascular etiology because ischemia can induce this uh, meniere disease it is said to be and another etiology is said to be genetic because there are certain genes which are associated with meniere disease like kcn e1 kcn e3 acoporin 2 then ptpn 22 and even HSPA1A. This HSPA1A gene is uh, something which is associated with autoimmune etiology of meniere disease. That is heat shock protein 70, which can cause meniere disease. Why did I tell you when I took the video on sudden sensorineural hearing loss? Seven-year-old Katapa, who is meant to protect Bahu Belly, stabs him from behind, right? And look at the background of heat there. From that, you can see how. bow belly is getting shocked by that even and so you can remember it as heat shock protein 70 which is implicated in autoimmune cause of meniere disease as well as in case of sudden sensorineural hearing loss as well so these are the various etiology that are associated with meniere disease now the management part of meniere disease will be dealt with in another video until then goodbye